How is this greasy already? I just cleaned these lenses off. I guess that's the nature of things when you're working outdoors. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? If you're doing well, I'm great. I'm just doing a little behind the scenes, getting ready to film a video. Neighbors, kids are playing and making noise. That's good. Always good to have the kids outside playing. I am about to film a video about these biophytums, the sensitivums. And uh, I was debating while I was sitting here going, okay, so in this video, the video that will probably have been out right before this one, am I just going to cover their care or should I do their care and potting them up? And then I thought, well, why don't I just get it done? I think it'd be more fun for the potting up part to have that be part of a vlog so I could just talk while I'm doing it as opposed to doing like a bunch of fancy cuts and things that I'll probably include in the Wednesday video because... I'll probably talk about potting them up. Maybe. I haven't fully decided yet. Anyways, I, they're just cute plants. The video about their care and everything will be in the video prior to this one. Probably going to be a shorter video since I'm going to do the fun crafty stuff right now. There's going to be plenty of fun stuff going on this week. I just, this is a very random thing. I just picked up and thought, well, I'll bring y'all along. So what I'm doing here is potting up these biophytes. Aren't they just, we need to take another moment to appreciate how stinking cute these things are. I love biophytums. They're cute. Mostly something I'd recommend for a terrarium, but again, care stuff will be in the video prior to this one. I want to pot one of these up in this coconut. <laughs> this plastic coconut has a teeny tiny hole in the bottom. This is from a Lilo and Stitch Yahtzee set that I got for my niece. And uh, I decided uh, it was really cute, so I bought myself one solely so I could plant something up in the middle of it. There you go, there's the backstory of that. Then over here, I have this, I guess it's not really a mud man, it's a bonsai planter. It has a big opening in the bottom. I plant this up every couple of years with something new. It has been a difficult planter to keep plants in because it's a very awkward shape. It's hard to get water in there. So a cactus would probably be the best way to go for this thing, but I don't want to do that. I've always wanted to put a little palm tree in there, so that's what I'm going to do. I mean, it's not a palm tree, but you get it. It's going to be the palm tree vibe. So to combat the issue that I've always had with keeping this well watered, I'm going to put wicking cord in this this time, and I'm going to use this that I have the biophytum soaking in right now as the base. So I'll fill this up with gravel, set him in there, and fill it up with water and have that wicking cord down in the bottom. That's going to help keep things nice and consistently moist. And if need be, I have a dome over here that fits perfectly on top of this gorgeous plastic food container. So that's what's going on there. I need... Actually, I think I have just about everything I have. I have a bunch of pre-moistened soil here. I'm not sure if it's going to be quite enough. I think it will be. I Should I top dress this with sand? Think about that. Once the palm tree is in there, the, the palm, I'm going to keep calling it a palm tree. You're just going to have to get used to that. I know it's not a palm tree. Uh, actually, I think I want him, the taller one, over here for scale. Because with this, I want it to look like a little island. So having that curve in the trunk, yeah, that's going to be better. I also need to stop picking these things up and moving them around because they just showed up in the mail. So they're all crimpled down. This is a plant that responds to touch and movement and they fold their leaves down, kind of like the mimosa pudica, but more slow to respond and to open back up. So it would be ideal if they would be open and looking nice for when I filmed the video talking about them, which is another reason I thought, let's just do this in the vlog. Let's have some fun potting something up. We'll get some white sand to put in here. I should have plenty. The problem is these bags have been sitting out in the rain, so I'm a little paranoid once I pop this thing open, I might just like destroy the entire bag and have sand go everywhere. Hopefully that won't be the case. I mean, I've opened bags in a much more tidy manner before, but this should do. I don't need very much. I'm just going to be top dressing that coconut. That should be plenty. Oh, the drip follow-up from last weekend's video. I'm loving this. Everything down here, so lush and happy. And I haven't had water in like four days on that end of the patio other than those pots around the pool. Gosh, that's so nice. Got y'all set up on a little tripod here. Audio might get weird because I don't have a wireless mic that works reliably with the phone setups. I tried a setup that had always worked in the past, not too long ago while I was driving, and the audio was terrible. I don't know what that was all about, but you know, those things happen. As for starters, I'll do the coconut, only because it seems like the easier of the options here. This one over here, this guy, such a pain in the butt to get planted up. Try and 
get the soil raised up on the sides. I will want this planted down probably at an angle, I'm thinking. Yeah, that would probably look better at an angle. It, the tape that this Etsy seller used isn't, it's not, it's not masking tape. You can't just tear through it, which is pretty annoying. I'm going to try and just peel it off. I don't think I have any scissors or a blade nearby. That would be ideal, though. I'm going to need to find something. This is like, I don't know, whatever it is, it's plasticky and it doesn't want to tear. Managed to barely get that off with the box cutter that I just put a new blade on. It's just a bad pack of blades. They're really limping. Useless. I am so apprehensive about unpotting this for a few different reasons. One of them being that I want to film a video about these, spotlighting them, and they look like garbage <laughs> because they just arrived in the mail. And again, they're plants that respond to touch and movement, so they're not happy from shipping. And they're going to be even more unhappy when I unpot them. I'm tempted to just... No, don't do that. That's a bad idea. When I have tried to hold on to these before, like when I found them growing these palm trees or, you know, whatever, plants have been shipped up from down south, I've never had good luck with transplanting them, but they're also rooted down into the roots of other plants. I didn't have a clean way to get these out. They have very, very fine roots. Okay, this is fine. Main thing here is that I do not want to disturb those roots. This is in no way root bound, so there's absolutely no reason to go pulling and tearing at that root ball. Probably should have planted this up a little bit higher. But this will have to do. Or right, maybe I can just very carefully pull that back out. Yeah, I just need to be very careful. That's the key here is being a very gentle. So that's not always my style. Sometimes I like to just rip into projects and get them going. But it would be better for this cute little plant if I'm very careful. I do want it at a pretty sharp angle because I want it to have that, you know, palm tree vibe to it. Yeah, I think that's good. I think that's a good angle, like that little slope. And now, <laughs> the fun part, which is going to be getting that soil back in there, backfilled around it, carefully, without get, having to shove my fingers down in there and crumple up the root zone that this thing has left on it. I don't know what I mean by has left on it. You know it has roots there. I just mean I don't want to damage that root ball at all. Nice and slow. I am in so much trouble. If I'm thinking that this is difficult, to, how the heck am I going to pull this off? That's going to be tricky. I'm just going to have to hope that that other one has some nice solid roots on it and be glad that I'm setting it up in a manner where I can put a dome over the top of it in case it starts to go south. Holding in humidity will make a big difference as far as transitioning it into a new container. These aren't plants that you typically move around and repot all that much. Most people start them from seed and then when they get to be the right size you move them up to a larger pot and that's about it because they're also a short-lived plant too. It's, you know, what, 18 months, something like that once they flower. Sometimes they'll put out several sets of flowers but at some point, generally before you get to the two-year mark, they die because they're done flowering. So that also has me wondering if I should cut the flower buds off of this thing. Can you see the flower buds up there? Those little strings that are coming off the top, those are buds. Don't want it to flower because then it will die. Sorry if I'm, my voice seems low energy. I'm very focused and being very careful about not doing too much here. I also should have rinsed this entire container off before top dressing it, but I didn't, so it's fine. This is okay. Just going to have to pinch some of that sand down. There's going to be some soil showing through. That's okay. And then I will water this. And after I water it, I'll top dress it with some more sand. I should probably try and find some seashells or something else to stick in there. It's looking a little bit bland, but it is... I mean, come on. That's freaking cute, isn't it? Just imagine if it were actually opened up and not all wilty and bummed looking from the shipping. It would probably be looking really cool right now. Okay. This guy. I need to think on this for a minute. Well, it's first things first here is to get the soil into the bottom and to do that while also trying to maintain the wicking cord. It doesn't necessarily need to be in a specific position, but 
It would be better if it's not just sitting right on one of the sides or in the bottom. It would be more ideal if it were further down, dangling in there towards where the plant's going to be potted up, right? Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. What did I do with that little pot? I think that would be useful right now. Maybe even wedge this somewhere. Like that. Will that stand up on its own? Yeah, <laughs> that'll do. Better than nothing. And then start scooping the soil out of here and dump. Well, but I need to put the plant in there. What am I doing? Oh, one of the issues with planting this up is the awkward angles and everything. So what I'm trying to do is go in and pack the soil into the nooks and crannies that are in there so that I don't have to spend much, if any, time with the plant being upside down while I'm trying to get some soil in there around its roots. That's not going to be ideal for a plant that does not like being moved around, right? That's just going to cause some problem. But I figure just get in here and pack it in. That's another reason I have the soil moistened up is so that it's moldable and I can get it into all the spots. I don't know how well you guys can, can you see in there? See what's going on? Lots of spots that are difficult to get filled in with soil and that might be one of the reasons that whenever I put things in here they don't tend to last more than like a year is one because it's hard to water and two because I would imagine that there have been plenty of occasions that I have potted things up inside of this container and not done a very good job at doing this, at going in and packing that soil up into the sides. Oops, accidentally turned the camera off now for the wicking cord. I think that right around there should be good. I want it close enough to the root ball, but still I want enough dangling there so that it's easy to get down into this water basin over here. And now add some more soil to help hold that in place. I might actually need more soil, which would be surprising because I thought that I brought a lot over here, but this guy holds a lot more than I remember. It seems like such a tiny little pot. Sorry about the bad camera work there. Can't really see what's going on. But the inside does hold a fairly good amount. At the very least, want to make sure that it's packed in to right here so that the wicking cord's held in place. And then I have to get the screen on here so that the soil stays in place. I might I might just put a new piece of screen on this. I have some over here and I think it would be easier to just glue the screen on. Usually with a bonsai container you would wire it on but that's a really big hole. I don't think that wire is going to work all that well for something like this. Not without it sticking out all over the place that has to have some leverage on the outside of the hole in order to hold the screen in place. So that might be what I'll end up doing here. I guess I'm going to figure that out because it's the next step. Nah, I decided to stick with the old screen. Just made more sense because it'll pop right into place as opposed to having to glue something to the pot. This is a, I don't know about valuable. It's valuable to me. It was a gift. Sentiment. That's the word. There's some sentimental ties to it and it's not something that I think I could ever replace because I cannot find these for sale. I've been asked so many times by you all, whenever I pop this thing up, people saying, what is it? Where do I get it? I've spent hours on the internet and I found some things that are similar, but never this exact same thing. And the drainage dish, it used to have an attached drainage dish to, on it, on the bottom, that vanished years ago. That may have had some sort of identification for whoever made it, I don't know, but that's gone. It's long gone. So. I just have to be very careful with this one. It's not a pot that I like to uh, move around very much or get rough with, that's for sure. Now I'm going in and filling in with my fingers wherever I feel air bubbles or gaps, like up in here into the sides around his head. There are some gaps that I can feel and somewhat down here also. Need to make sure I leave enough room to get the root ball in for this guy because, well, I can't plant it if I don't have space there for it. I want the soil to be not really tight, but if it's not enough soil, if there are too many air bubbles, then it's going to be harder to keep it hydrated. That'll be an issue. And the transportation, if that's what we call it, the wicking of the water for this wicking cord won't be as efficient if there are big air bubbles in here. 
I think that's pretty good. Okay, now for the part that I'm really nervous about, and that's getting this one unpotted and into that hole. It's not a very big opening. It's better than a lot of other things that I've put inside this pot before. I've put larger things in there before, but usually have to lead them up through the bottom. All right, well, no way to get it done if you don't start on it, right? So you have to go in and hope for the best. This one's slightly larger than the other one, so hopefully its root ball is maybe some more developed and sturdy, but I don't know. These biophytums, they have such fine roots that it doesn't take much to do damage to them, so I need to be very careful here. Really don't even need to be doing all this. This is probably just stressing the plant out even more because it's moving soil around or moving the roots, pinching on the roots more than what's actually necessary. Yeah, okay, so in some ways this is good and in some ways this is bad. Uh, it's bad in the sense that this does not have anywhere near as solid of a root mass as the other one did. Like as soon as I move my hand, this is gonna fall to pieces. Uh, the good thing about that is it's gonna be easier to get into the container, into this spot right here, but uh, uh, I gotta be really, really careful here because I do not want to tear these roots up at least not any more than necessary. I'll try and gently, very, very gently get some of this cocoa peat out of here, but not through force, just very, very softly combing my finger around and lifting it and just letting it flake out on its own. Starting to see some pieces of root fall out, which means that it is time to stop. Now just need to get that down in there Hopefully there's enough room. Hope I didn't overfill this. No, I think that's good. Yeah. Okay. And there's still some room in there to backfill. It's not much, but there's there's a little bit of room to do some backfilling. If you're doing something like this at home, I would highly recommend using a chopstick and not your finger, something with a finer tip to gently work that soil down in there, but this is what I have right now. I'm all set up with tripods and stuff around me so I don't really feel like going in and trying to find a chopstick that I'm going to use for something like this. I think that's pretty good. I want to make sure there's some room on top so I can top dress this with some gravel because proportionately it's going to be odd. Well, I don't It's not time to talk about that yet. Never mind. Okay, that's done. I need to clean all this up. Get the soil out of here. I'm going to very gently water these and come back. Okay, much better. I also, I made the mistake of dumping out my sand when I still, I needed it. I was not done. Look at, because I need to retop dress that because I just gave it a big water. I'm actually thinking white gravel might be better in there or maybe even some blue stone. I have some blue fire glass. Is that what it's called? You know, the stuff that goes into a fire pit that might work for that. Maybe just around the edge. Do the blue and then keep the white sand or white gravel in the middle so it'll look like a little island. That's something to think about. Uh, for now though, I need to add in these tiny bits of gravel to the top of this container just because I think that it's going to make it look more finished off if there's something top dressed up here. You know, not, we're not looking at soil, not that it's that noticeable, but I think it will also help add some scale to the basin when I put this inside of that, the plastic food container thing, because I have larger size gravel that this will be sitting on top of, so that will help just put things into proportion, being able to have the tiny rocks up here. But I think, I mean, that's a good scale, right? See his face to those little rocks? I think that looks good, opposed to if I were to use bigger, chunky rocks, or nothing at all. It just, it adds to it. It's not taking away from it. And then this, right, yeah, this is my basin. This <laughs> plastic food container. I have some bowls that I thought would have looked good to do this with, but they didn't fit that glass dome back there. Not that that's something that has to happen, but I just, I have a feeling that this poor thing is going to want some humidity held in for the next couple of weeks. So I'm going to just fill this up with some nice, very clean, not at all dusty, lava rock here, as much of that in there as I can, 
Yep, the dust and all. Probably should have given that a rinse. That's not enough. I was worried about that. I'm going to need more than that. Uh-oh. Because this is what I was going to top dress the gravel with. So I have that larger rock there. And then I have these this finer slate to go on top it. I don't think I have enough of the slate to put up there. Let's find out. But I don't think so. Could maybe pull this out and put a layer of big chunky pumice underneath it and then put this on top of it. Well, I don't really want to do that. So this is, I think this is fine. I'm gonna make this work. Oh yeah, this will be fine. A nice hefty layer of this. I wanted to make sure that this was a heavy layer because I think it's much more attractive than the lava stone. So get that leveled out, nice and flat on top. And then can take our little guy here and just set him right there. Oh, I think that's cute. Obviously it'd be more attractive if it were a different planter, a different style, but this is good. I uh, need to make a little hole here, using my finger, and try and get as close to the bottom as possible. That way I can get the wicking cord as far down there as possible. Another good use for a chopstick. You use a chopstick, you can push that down in there nice and far have some wiggle room here lift that up and then just make sure that the space stays full of water and that's all good that's done I like it yeah a different bowl would be more attractive but this is what I had and look at what I was talking about look at how perfectly this dome fits in there it practically snaps into place just believe me it really does there we go yeah, it's a nice fit a very good fit so uh, well oh, okay there's a height problem in there. Didn't anticipate that, but it's okay. The dome isn't meant to be a permanent thing anyways. It's just to help with the transition. There should be more than enough moisture with this down here being full of water to take care of <laughs> the plant. <laughs> It'd be interesting when I'm filming the video on their care talking about what the heck's going on over here, but that's okay. How's that? Is that better? Oh, and then I dug out some of the gravel so that it's more like around him. I don't want him to look like he's buried in there. I think that's okay. Yeah, that's good. I need to stop moving these around. They're never going to perk up and look good enough to film a video on if I keep moving them. So I need to finish this up and then give them some time to just relax so I can get that video filmed. Because the more I, every time I touch them, they wilt down. So I'm going to see. I know I have some of that blue fire glass somewhere. I think that would be really cute to just do an outer ring with the white in the middle because it looked like a little island. I just, I have no idea where that stuff is. I bought it like three years ago and I use it once. I don't know. I don't know where I put it. Oh, no idea. Can't find it anywhere, but I do have some other plants that I can take from. So there's this agave back here that I don't think I'm going to try and take them out of because just picking the thing up drew blood. But I have my cactus here. I can get some of those out of there, no problem. Just borrow from this one. They're a lot bigger than I remember them being, so scale-wise, this might not make a lot of sense. I'm sorry while I'm talking, or that I'm adjusting the tripod as I'm talking. That's probably annoying, and maybe even noisy, but it's a vlog, so we just gotta keep it casual, keep things moving. Uh, yeah, I don't know. that might be okay. Come in and just try and gather enough of these so that I can put them around the edge. I'll sort them out. I'm not just going to leave them laying in like that, but I figure it's easier to do this first and then get the cactus out of the way so that I'm not stabbing myself the whole time. Uh, I think that this is, the proportion on this is kind of dumb. You may not be able to see the sand in the middle with the blue on the edges, but don't know till we try, right? It is kind of giving me a little palm tree on an island kind of vibe trying to lay these out so that they come upward into the sand that way they'll be more noticeable I don't know if that makes any sense in my head it makes sense they're pushed into the edge like I said I want them sticking up I was thinking that it was going to be kind of ridiculous to look at with those big stones but proportionately when I have them tucked down in there I think that's okay I think it's fine just add some extra color a little bit of flair to the container if you will, go ahead and move that around. Yeah, I think rocks would have been just as good. I don't know if using the blue stone actually made a difference or not, but 
you get it. I think it's cute. That's all that that's supposed to be. It's just supposed to be fun and cute. Nothing else to it. Okay, so that's it. What do we think? There's the <laughs> little mini palm tree. They're not palm trees, but you get it. That's what I've been calling them this whole time. I think they look nice. Cute. Yes. So I just need to fill this basin up with some water now. And then I'm going to give these a few hours to set. Maybe a day and then get that video filmed. They need to pop open. I can't really film that video until they pop open. Or I guess I couldn't just explain to people that this is what they're going to look like if you haven't shipped. It's just not very good. They're fun. They're really fun. I do. I think they're so stinking cute. I can't wait to watch these grow. Well, they're not going to grow that much. But it's just fun to have. Especially this one. I want to get this one inside and get it onto my counter. I think that's going to look good in there. Okay. So, yeah. We'll pick back up later. Okay. It's been about three and a half days. And I would say it's looking much better. Look how cute. Finally started to pop open. It's not all sad and wilty it did it took about three days it hasn't perked up at all since i potted it up so this is the first time i'm getting to see it looking cute looking real cute i've been torn because the video on these is supposed to come out in like 45 minutes and so i've been going through my head debating do i try and film some shots of this looking good and put that in that video but realistically 45 minutes it's not enough time for me to do that put it into the video and then re-export it, re-upload it and do all the stuff again. Like it just won't happen. Would have been nice, but it's okay. Here we are. It's, it's going to be fine. I think it looks cute. The one inside looking pretty good too. I've noticed yesterday it was maybe 50% that open and then set something down on the table too hard. It was that box over there. It had a bunch of drip stuff in it. Set it down, table wiggled, and then it started to close back up and it's like, dang it so close <laughs> to having it opened up so perhaps I need to put these someplace where there's less traffic and stuff going on anyways that's that was fun that was probably took up way too much of the video for what it was but I enjoyed it it was nice just sitting down planting things up it has been a very 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 rainy week that's why three days have passed and I think there might be a lull between the rain and the storms, it would just be so nice to be able to get over here and get something done. This whole area, it just, it needs a refresh and probably need to start it over. I have all these old drip lines I need to come in here and cut out. I'll salvage what I can. The problem is when these, after, I don't know, so many years, I don't, I don't have a number to give you, but generally I would say like after like five to seven years, somewhere in there, the tubes get really hard and when you move them they just crack otherwise i would have been reusing a bunch of these but really can't that's one thing with drip is it is very wasteful that's why with the new system i started setting up last week i'm trying to be very methodical and intentional with everything so that well just don't have to waste as much like look at all the look at all the heads that come off of this line right here i don't even know what all that goes to because you hit a point where you just start plugging in popping lines into the things and you lose track of what's what that's why this other system i've set up where it's just all set up on zone six of my irrigation it makes it so much easier to uh, um, run the lines off of because it's just one long line anyways it's gonna be noisy pull filters over here pumps kind of loud this area i need to fix it up what is this who are, where did you come from you're cute i don't remember planting you Okay, well that's fine. Oh, I do remember planting you. This is... We'll get back to that. Hard in the ADD. Resetting. Going back to where I was. Okay, over here. This is an area that has become very overgrown over the last few years. Oh, stuff started happening in 2020 and basically everything on this side of the yard I just said, eh, I, I don't have time for it. Not messing with it. It was mostly self-sustaining things. Like there are just some ferns. These were just divisions that I took from Osher Ferns had other places. But this was a garden at some point that went from right around here. There's a footpath that comes in here, goes up there to the patio. And then uh, I, I don't know why that's there. It doesn't need to be. That should probably be moved over there. But it steps around, goes around here, and it comes down <laughs> just around the base of this Paris K Magnolia. And then <laughs> over here through this hill. So you see there's a few more stepping stones in there. And the grass has grown up into the area 
there are options for how to tackle that part of clearing out what would be the garden bed here. I could go in with a spade and dig it and flip it, but these are pretty notorious weeds. They're not weeds. I don't do grass over here. It's just violets and the basket grass stuff that's over here. And it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I enjoy it. You don't have to mow. There's some nut sedge that happens. It's good. I'm fine with it. I don't need a green lawn over here. Nobody ever comes over here and you can step on it. It doesn't hurt anything. But I need to get this all kind of fixed back up. You can sort of see the line from where things used to be. So for this, what I was going to say is I'm probably going to be hitting this with dead brew several times to actually kill it back because with this grassy stuff that's under here when you dig it and flip it if you leave like the tiniest bit of root behind it comes back so that I, I guess I'll do that over the weekend because I would prefer to do that when there's a multiple day stretch of no rain I could spray it right now but I think it'd be a big waste of time the dead brew it's uh, it's good for what it's supposed to be right it's a safe alternative to things like roundup or some of the ortho ground clearing chemicals but you really got to stick with it and stay on top of it. And it needs to stick. And I don't think it, that that's just going to happen right now. So for the time being, I would say I need to come in here and focus on what I can do, which would be get all the old drip lines out of here. I have a ton of brick left over here. This is all scrap pieces. None of them are the same size as their different lengths, widths, thicknesses, which makes it difficult to really decide what to do with them. So I, I don't know, I have to figure out what to do with them. Get that all ironed out and then all these old like wooden pathways and things that are over here. I'll probably maybe keep that one, but that, that's just an old doormat underlayment that used to be on the patio that someone at some point threw down on the ground over here. I don't know why it's there. It's not supposed to be there. So you get it, right? I need to clean up. I need to redefine the lines and the edges to just do something with all the junk that's piled up over here. Over the weekend, I'm gonna spray. And then hopefully next week, can maybe do some planting. The planting part, that's a little complicated. I don't really know if I wanna dive into it right now. I would like to uh, have some hostas over here and then get some evergreens worked in around things that there's more winter interest out here. But I really wanna be intentional. Like I don't wanna just go to a nursery and pick out what they, I don't, I, here's what I should say. I don't wanna be at the mercy of what's in stock at the nurseries. I really want to make sure that what I put over here are things that I love. So I will probably be ordering online a lot of what's going to go over here and a lot of what comes in is gonna be really small. So there's not gonna be like a huge before and after with things over here. I just got distracted again. What is this? Who are you? That's a, I think another one of the Amorphophallus. Okay. Well, back on that. So last year, I talked about them in some videos. The Gigantia, Amorphophallus Gigantias. Pretty sure that's what they might be. Saronatums. Can't remember, but they're a fun type of voodoo lily, and that's what they do. <laughs> Usually, around mid to late June, they put up some leaves, and that's all it is. It's just you, you get a really pretty aeroid-like leaf, and I planted a whole bunch of them. And I think I mentioned the garden tour that I thought that. They had all died in the winter time, but apparently they just took longer to come up. Well, at least two of the six. I, I don't know. I don't see any more, but I guess we'll give it some more time. Everything is kind of behind this year. The weather's been like that. So, yeah, anyways, that's what's going on with those. Uh, yeah, I want to be methodical and only plant things over here that I absolutely love. So, like I said, there will be some things that die back. going to get some evergreens, small evergreens to put in here. And uh, mulch. It's going to need a lot of mulch. Look at that. Good thing this has a lifetime hassle-free guarantee. I just got this last summer. It's already chipping and falling apart. Nobody makes anything to last these days. You know, I'm thinking even just getting here and getting the old drip out of this spot, that's going to make such a huge improvement. Ooh, that could be bad. And I may come in here and decide that <laughs> I would like to use the shovel to get a bunch of the ground cover out of here just because I don't I don't feel like waiting. I just started I'm already feeling impatient. Like oh, I'm gonna have to spray and then wait a few days. You could come in here and just dig it out and then spray as needed afterwards. But it makes more sense to just spray first. Also 
could, yes, I know people are going to ask about this, um, the weed cloth, of course, that's an option. I despise digging through weed barrier. I hate it. So that's not something that I want to use over here because I don't want to have to chop through it anytime I want to plant something. And over time, soil and stuff builds up on top of it and then things start growing right on top of it. And by over time, I mean like within a year or two. For gravel, like if I were to fill this up with gravel, that'd be a different story. Uh, I would use a larger cobble if I were to do that, something I can use the blower on, but I, I don't plan on doing that. It's probably going to be mulch. Oh, yeah, that's already so much better. Nice and, it's not clean yet, but head in that direction. See, this has just all become a jumbled mess. Now, this is partially because a lot of what you're seeing here, I didn't always just have that in a pile and a knot over here. This is the beginning of the lines that ran to everything over here because I had that all plumbed in before the patio was redone to a bunch of timers that sat over here on the patio and uh well you know redoing all that so and get this pulled out there I see some couplers and probably some heads that still have caps on them that I'm going to try and save I'm going to try and salvage as much as I can like I said but the main thing is that this is open I can't do anything with the extension cord right now because need that these are supposed to be up here and I can see it needs some new light bulbs in these good starting off point have a lot of sand those are from the queen palm last year it kept blowing over and uh, it was too big to repot on my own so piled up sandbags around it and now I have a ton of sand and I don't know what to do with it I guess I should handle this now I don't know what to do with it though so this isn't when I do projects I don't like to just randomly pick stuff up and toss them somewhere else. I really like to be intentional with what I'm doing. And I don't I don't know what to do with these. I'm sure I could think of a ton of projects that I could maybe use this small amount of brick on, but I can't think of anything that I could do where it would actually potentially look good. I feel like whatever I do with it, it's gonna end up looking kind of junky. Cause they're all different sizes and pieces. There's not enough to edge out this garden. I thought there would be, but I actually played around with that a few weeks ago. And there's not, because that would have been an option to create a border, I guess you would call it, with these things. But there wasn't enough. And it didn't look right because the pieces were all different sizes and shapes and different thicknesses. If they weren't different thicknesses, then I wanted to put those over here and make a nice square pad for the barbecue grill. But I don't want to have to level each <laughs> one of these. I think that would be a nightmare. More work than I think it would be worth. So I'm going to get this put away. And then we can come back in here and pick up some more. As far as plants are concerned to put over here, I know I talked about some evergreens. I don't want to do like boxwoods. I think that might look boring in a spot like this, but maybe, I don't know, some tater tot arbs. Think about Clara's potentially. I don't want it to be too cookie cutter. I want this to be a spot where I put some things that are fun and unusual, maybe some ligularia of some type that could be fun, but I have to make sure that everything's proportioned properly. And I need to pay attention to where the dogs are running through here. I don't want to plant anything up where the dogs are running through. I also, on that note, should be really more focused on what I'm doing over here. Cause when I picked these up the other day, there were like three black widows. So I should probably be using both hands and watching what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. That looks better. That was not fun. That wasn't fun at all. So many freaking centipedes. Spiders? Don't mind them. Centipedes? Nope. Nope. I don't mess with centipedes. They bite and it hurts. I held on to some of these because they're the right size to use for the tortoise garden area over there. So I, I can move them over there to help build that wall up because Colby is growing. So gonna need to make that wall taller at some point. Everything else that's in here are just scraps and broken pieces and just, I don't know, it's kind of like if you ever done a tile job, you always end up with pieces that don't fit right or they're discolored, they don't match, and then you just kind of have a pile of meh. So that's what I'm left with is the meh over here. I have an area on the berm on the other side of the garden where we need to raise it up because it's where the water overflows when it floods back here. So those might be an option for that. I very briefly laid several of them out to be like, what would that look like as a walkway. I didn't like it. It did not look like anything I would want to 
step on. It looked uncomfortable. I don't know what to do with this thing. I guess just get rid of it. It's not in very good shape. I can hose it off and let it dry off and see if it starts to look better. Maybe somebody else will want it, but oh, I see a good amount of rot on here. Ugh. It already looks better. I, uh, yeah, I think I mentioned I'm going to leave that right there because it does kind of encourage the dogs to walk that way. And I'm not going to be planting anything right in this spot anyways because the grill's right there. So anything that would get planted is just going to get fried by the heat. And then I have uh, this one. That doesn't need to be there. Doesn't make any sense at all. I don't even know why it's there. Oh, hey, look, there's still some mulch left from two years ago when I had this spot mulched up. That's uh, chunks, pine chunks. I really liked how that looked. The reason I want this here is because the path that used to be over here is starting to disappear. You can't really get through there without walking through the needle palms. So having some more stones further out this way, I think, makes it easier to get through here. Need to dig this one up, and I thought I had this one nice and level. Apparently I don't. I think if I were to lift these up, give them a scoot, that would be better too. And that'll open up the front of this bed some more too. End up expanding it out. Okay. These are re-leveled. This one still has a little bit of wobble to it. The stone itself is concave. I don't really know what to do about that other than just suck it up and live with it. And keep lifting it up and filling it in from the bottom. I found a huge flagstone <laughs> right here, so uh need to find a flat spade and get that cleared off. And I'll probably actually do a lot of what's left over here with a power washer over the weekend to clear the path and get the stones up. I think that'd be the best way to do it. Otherwise, have to come in here and lift them all up, redig them, and level them out. And I don't want to do all that. Power washer will blast the crud out from around them just fine. So, there we go. I know, I didn't get anything planted yet, so it doesn't seem that exciting, but the next step is to just clear out the underbrush and plant up, which is fun. So it means that I get to spend a good amount of time online shopping for plants to an extent. I know the nurseries have a few things that I want. Like I said, uh, maybe some hostas, something to go in a ring that's small around the base of this fountain, and then uh, for the next layer up, probably maybe some claras or maybe boxwoods. I'd prefer not to go with boxwoods. I would like to do sable miners and a ring around this maple and bring them down through here, but they're just not obtainable. They cost a fortune to get this far north. You have to have them shipped and it, I, don't, I just don't want to do it. It's more stuff to have to protect during the winter time. I got enough of that to deal with already. Not to mention, I already have these glorious needle palms over here. I don't really need more palms over here on this side. That's why I was thinking some things with some nice bold leaves like Ligularas. Maybe the spotted ones might be pretty. Uh, oh, I need to re-level this bird bath too. Hmm. I'm going to want help with that because the dish on top is old and fragile. This thing's well over 30 years old, so I don't want to mess with that without somebody on the other side. I just don't want to risk dropping it. But I have to take that off to bring it up and re-level it. I'm actually pretty sure this used to be more like right here. And over time, just gravity and erosion, it has worked its way down there. And the roots from the maple lift things up and move them around. And the maple and the roots, that's another reason that I'm pretty okay with doing mail order plants. <laughs> that's what we call it, mail order. Ordering them online because they come in smaller. And it's very difficult to dig large holes over here. So I would rather plop in lots of little things than try and squeeze in some big stuff. The maple eventually won't be here. It was planted too close to the house. I have the magnolia over there that's further away and will stay smaller. It's the K Paris or Paris K. I can't remember which which way it is. But that'll max out at about 20 feet as opposed to, you know, the maple, which is like 80 <laughs> at some point. That was just way too close. And the house is right there. It's just poorly planned gardening with that being that close to the house. The magnolia when I'd say that that's probably doubled to tripled in size, the maple's going to go. Uh, or whenever it looks like potentially the roots are starting to mess with the foundation or anything else, it'll go. I hate to cut it down. It's a beautiful tree, but um, it's just, uh, I, I don't think it'd be worth the damage that it could cause to the house having it that close to the foundation. So the magnolia is going to eventually be the tall centerpiece of everything. And the next layer down have the limelight prime hydrangea. 
Maybe you could put another one over here behind the maple when the maple's gone. And then aware of evergreen shrubs of some kind and then whatever types of fun ground covers. I would like to plant some hardy orchids in here, some cypripediums, but that's something where I really need to have this finished first. That's like a last finishing step. They're very expensive and um, they are delicate. <laughs> so I need to like really figure out where the dogs prefer to run through here. They'll have to go someplace protected so they don't get trampled. I already have the acanthus over here, oak leaf acanthus right there. One over there, I planted a ton of these in the spring and just spread them all around the yard so that I can see really next year where they've overwintered and come back and do their best. I have one more, so one, two, probably put a third down over here or maybe up in the front of that bed. There is a viburnum over here, the wine and something. I can't remember its name. Its tag fell off. It was really big and beautiful and got gorgeous pink berries on it in the late summer. And then last winter, it just got knocked down to the ground. So <laughs> I've been storing pots and plant wires over there. So that might be another spot to plant something taller that has some more dramatic effect. But these are all fun things that I can think about over the weekend and hopefully have some of it ready to go in the ground next week. If I can find a regular shovel that's flat all the way across, then I think I will come in here, edge this out, and just scrape that stuff up. I don't want to do it with a scoop shovel. It's going to go down deeper than I want it to. I've spent years amending the soil over here to make it nice because this has all been clay. So there's probably a good six inch layer here of nice soil. But if I go much further underneath that, I'll start digging into the clay, which I guess isn't that bad of a thing uh, over time, right? You want to get those layers blended together, but this isn't it. I, d I don't want to create more problems. <laughs> Ooh, some aspidistras. That could be fun. Maybe a camellia right here. I've been thinking about that. That might be a good spot for one. I know you would think it's sheltered because it's against the house, but this is northern exposure, so it actually this spot gets pummeled by wind in the winter time. But I, don't, I just don't know where else I could put a camellia out here. All the spots where I used to have them get way too much shade now, and the lighting over here would be good for a camellia. Again, we can talk all these things another time. I don't know why it has to be another time. This is a gardening channel. That's where I was standing around and talking about the possibilities with plants, but this is the majority of what I wanted to get done. Like I said, over the weekend, I'm only wrapping it up because it's starting to rain get this stone pathway cleaned up some more and then i would also like to get all this stuff moved clear out this area and make a nice little bed of something right here the bananas i think they need to go they just don't work you can't get through this doorway with those bananas right there so i have to do something about that i would like to put one of those pharaoh's dream color cages right here i might do that if they have put up any babies. We can go look at that because I think I saw some offshoots coming off of them last week. And if so, then by this week they should be big enough to pull. I'm thinking, but yeah, it looks like they've got, yeah, there's another one right there. And it looks like there's another one right here. You can even see the runner above the soil. So that's good. I think that that tall cup shaped leaf in front of that window is going to be really pretty. And they're I don't know how to put it, vase-shaped. It has a nice vase shape to it. So you can plant around them, and uh, that is good for a narrow gardening bed, something tall and vase-shaped. They don't take up the entire space, but they give you some height and something nice to look at. I think that would be good over there. Oh, and another reason that I'm excited about this area, I'd also update, instead of wrapping things up, I've decided to keep going because I looked at the radar and still have like maybe 15 or 20 minutes before what looks like bad storms are gonna be over here. Another reason that I'm excited for this area over here, was this bugging anybody else? It was bugging me. Is this is actually a nice wide garden bed. All of my garden beds in this yard are on the perimeter of the lot or they are up against the house. So they're very narrow beds and that's harder to work with. You can't do as much with it. Whereas in here it can actually use some of the principles of design by having the layers and proportions and scale not that I'm going to do all that, but I have the option. <laughs> I have the option with the narrow beds too, but it's just, I don't know. I feel like it makes things so much more gardeny to have an area where you have a path that goes up here. I'll probably eventually put in a path that goes down there. I think that'll just look neat where you have something that can go all the way around. I don't have any spots like that, sorry. That was my hand 
on the grill. Okay, I know I said I wasn't gonna do it, but it's just bugging me. I gotta get it done. At least get it started. I should at least try and see how stubborn these are going to be, how deep I'll have to go down with the scoop spade shovel. Yeah, I think a flat edge would probably <laughs> be a lot more productive for this. You see, it's all it's over here, this area and over, it is roots and it's not an easy space to dig in. <laughs> and it's been 15 minutes. Storm's starting to get here. Use the root slayer and this right here, that's all I got done. That little patch, that's it. That's it, 15 minutes. The roots on these things, not easy. And you don't want to leave any root behind. Otherwise I would go through and hand pull all this. So the, like I said, the options are weed barrier or the dead brew, maybe both. I don't know, we'll see. Either way, it's not happening right now because it's supposed to rain off and on the next few days. So I don't want to bother wasting that dead brew stuff. So it needs to be applied over and over and over again for a spot like this at least. So, hey, this is better. I don't know what I came over here and I cut one thing off and I started to dig up the weeds. Hey, I had a burst of energy and I thought I was going to do something incredible. And instead, I just I dug a very small patch of weeds up. Ow. I'm not going to end it yet. We're well, going to wait out the weather, see what happens. Maybe we'll be able to get some more stuff done. Okay, look at that. That's looking so much better. The bonsai guy one. Hadn't shown you an update on that one. It's been a few days. There's been plenty of rain. We had a lightning storm last night. That was intense and really pretty. It was also interesting that it didn't rain until like an hour after the lightning storm. I wasn't, I don't, we don't need to talk about weather. And other plant reports, this, this isn't the right orchid. It's supposed to be a sesame. See, that's what it says right there on the tag, which you would, you would know if it would focus. See there? Yeah, that's what this is supposed to be. That's not... No. It's close, but that's like saying any orchid with spots on it is a sesame. That's not the case. I have another beautiful spotted orchid over here. It's going out of bloom. But that's a Fiji sunset, I think is this one's name. I believe something sunset. Yeah, Fiji sunset. Raymond Burr. It's got spots, but that's not a sesame. Is what it is. I have the cloche over here. It was only on there for about a day. Once the leaves opened up, I pulled it off. It's been fine. So the cloche is now doing its thing for the dragon scale pepperoni over there. Hi, Kitten. You're not supposed to be up there. Kitten, we've talked about this. We're not supposed to, we're not going to do that with your generation. Pumpkin and Charlie, they got spoiled, but nope, not you. You got to get down. Sorry. It all started with Pumpkin because she can't jump very high. And this is like an easy way for her to get to a place where I can put her food that the dogs can't get to. It used to keep the food on a cat tree, but the dogs, they could get onto the cat tree, especially this one. He's a big boy and nobody ever eats here. So it's, you know, who cares? It's fine. Pardon the mess. Been doing other things. Yeah, sorry for that tail. I love her tail. It's so poofy like jiggles and flows in the air <laughs> when she's running around. You want to go out? I know you do. Yeah, let's go outside. There we go. Oh, that feels good. Oh, oh girl, it's muggy. Well, the cool off was nice while it lasted. Oh, I might have to water plants. I haven't watered plants in probably a week. Something like that. It's, just, it's been raining. Haven't had to and it hasn't been hot either. I have got to repot this Musa Florida. The poor thing. It's getting, I don't know if it's root bound. I don't think it's, I've seen bananas much bigger than this in 10 inch containers before, but its growth has just been coming out kind of weak. Uh, I think Turbo did that. It was on its site. We don't need to go on all that. The Labrador tail got to it the other day. Over here, I made some more progress with pulling up some weeds. I went ahead and just got down my hands and knees and started yanking. Uh, and uh, that's, uh, that's where I stopped. I said, I'm probably going to hit this with dead brood now that we have several days in the forecast where it's not supposed to rain and get a lot of that stuff up. And then mulch. Well, I guess plants. I prefer to plant and then mulch, but I might do things the other way around because mulch will help take care of a lot of this. And then we'll be able to see a defined line of this actual garden bed. Because right now it just blends with the lawn because the lawn, lawn, is growing up onto it. So... Hey, made some progress here. About ready to plant it up. Just need to, you know, handle some of the overgrowth. Get some mulch and get some plants. I have a shopping cart full 
no, overflowing. Well, that's not possible. It's an online cart. You know what I mean? A very heavy cart <laughs> online through plant delights of some more unique type plants that I think would be fun to try over there. I need to play around with things some more because I would like to start off with the bones, meaning, you know, pick out a few decent sized evergreen shrubs as large as I think a little plant over there. Except there's a lot of root. Even trying to pull the weeds up over there was difficult because there are so many surface roots from the maple tree. So need to go with small plants, which is fine. They'll grow. That's half the fun, right? It's watching them grow. But I need to pick a direction because there's like 47 different types of plants in that shopping cart. And one, that's made too much money. Two, that's it's just going to look like pure chaos. So then I need to go through some things. Oh, you want a better example of what a sesame looks like? Here's a sesame right here. Yeah, see? Sesame. And that's what they're... They're supposed to be small little spots with some more creamy yellow background. Even this sesame doesn't look quite right to me. Something's off with these. I know. All over the place. That's because it's the end of the video. We've reached that part where I gotta spend some time watering now and I need to edit. Otherwise, I'd just go to the store and buy some mulch. I really I would have liked to have gotten that done, but just didn't have time this week. But hey, that means next week, get to go buy mulch and probably buy some plants. And I know that I had said with that area over there, I probably wouldn't be doing anything with like hardy palms because the needle palms already have such a big appearance over there. But there are other types of palms that have more pinnate style fronds. It's because I went down a fern rabbit hole and I was like, ferns are cool, but why not some palms? That might be a good area to try out some of the reticollis. The Gimiduria reticollis, there's a trunk form and a uh, smaller form that stays much shorter and kind of has a subterranean trunk. I have tried those a long time ago. I was a teenager when I tried them. And they would die back to the ground in the winter and they would come back up in the spring faster than the Levistonas do, the Chinese fan palms. But you don't get a lot out of them, so you need to plant a whole bunch of them for them to really have an appearance. And by the end of the season, they just kind of look like a parwar palm that's in the garden. That could be fun. I just need to find them at the right price, and I would need a lot of them. So then if you if you got a source that's not from seed, like they're already started plants, let me know. I see some on Etsy and eBay and stuff like that. I've checked out all those places, but they're kind of pricey. And they're usually what looks like people down in Florida who have them growing in their garden. They're just ripping seedlings out of the ground and then selling them to you for $30. I would rather go with something that's potted with an established root system because we're already towards the end of the growing season, so this is not really the right time to be playing around with hardy palms. <sighs> okay, that's enough. It is so freaking humid out here. Heat's not too bad. It's like 84, but it just feels like standing inside of a humidifier. I'm gonna go inside to get this thing edited. Hey, thanks for hanging out. Happy to have gotten that portion of the new garden area started over there. I had debated holding off on doing that until I had all the plants and all the materials ready because it'd be fun to have a one video where it's start to finish, but that's also just not reality for the majority of us to do an entire garden space in one go. And I want to be really methodical about what I put over there. I really want to put a lot of thought into what goes in that space. Like I said, I'm probably gonna hit up some nurseries next week. But I don't know if I'll be getting anything. So I don't know if I'll be planting up next week. So you know, if you order the plants, you got to wait a while for them to get here. And I just took another peek at that Plant Delights shopping cart. And it's mostly ferns. It's a lot of different unusual ferns that have either monstrous proportions or minuscule, but surprisingly evergreen and heat tolerant type ferns. And uh, I don't think I need, I need to pick one as far as that's concerned. Uh, and the same thing with some hostas need to pick one. I have lots of ideas for dieback perennials and more herbaceous type plants. It's just, I think I need to pick out like three shrubs. Well, one type of shrub, but I would want about three of them. That's going to be evergreen, can go part sun, part shade, drought tolerant and hardy to 7A, which is really pushing. I think 6A would be better, but I want this to be a spot where I can experiment with some things. So that's what I'm going for over there. And it's uh, the whole planting process is to me, most of the fun and planting up everything and getting them and all that's fun too, watching them grow, but it's just exciting starting a new garden space. And uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out. It's going down below. Say, hey, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you as part of it. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye.